listeners to another installation of our In the Hot Seat panel discussion uh, focused on how technology is solving problems in today's industries. Uh, I'm Kyle DeWitt, Vice President of Technical Services here at ScanSource, and I'm pleased to bring to you uh, another episode as a part of our Discover Opportunities Initiative. Uh, and today I'm joined by four of our supplier partners, uh, Cisco, Epson, DataLogic, and Code, uh, who are all here to help you, our partners, discover opportunities within the healthcare space. Uh, this is one of three discussions we're having in this space on healthcare, and uh, today we're going to try to focus a little bit on a sub-theme of uh, digitization of the healthcare, That's uh, or digitization of healthcare, not the healthcare, uh, and I've successfully said that word twice. Uh, I wrote it down once, and I thought I'd only have to say it once. I've said it twice so far. Uh, we'll see how the rest of this panel goes. So let me uh, start with a, a round of introductions here. We will go ladies first. Uh, Allison, if you'd take a minute to introduce yourself and your role. Thank you, Kyle. My name is Allison Norfleet, and I'm one of the global healthcare industry leads at Cisco. I'm part of the Industry Solutions Group. And that is a vertical organization within Cisco that focuses on the go-to-market globally for healthcare. All right, thank you. And uh, Bonnie? Hello, everyone. Nice to be with you. My name is Bonnie Rindle. I'm a product manager for ColorWorks, which are industrial color label printers. Um, and I cover the North America territory, but work closely with Epson subsidiaries all over the world on global deals. All right, thank you. Uh, Jerry, I'll come to you next. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, ScanSource. Uh, happy to be here. I have been in the AIDC space uh, for about seven years, four of those uh, focused on healthcare mainly. I work here at Code, and I manage a four-state territory as a regional manager here in the Northwest. Thank you. And uh, Alberto. Hi, Alberto Balestra, uh, Industry Marketing Manager for Healthcare in DataLogic. I'm actually based in the headquarter in Northern Italy, and I cover uh, the, the marketing strategic um, aspect of the business worldwide. Thank you. You're, um, you're breaking our consecutive streak, Alberto, of having representation of all the NFL cities uh, in the U.S. We've got, uh, we've got Atlanta, we've got the Chicago area, we've got L.A. today. Uh, good contingency from, uh, from uh, our first panel, but I think we'd all agree we'd rather be with you. Uh, yes. than with than an NFL city right now. So, all right, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you uh, all four of you for joining today. So, uh, like I said, we're going to focus today on um, some of the trends within uh, digitization of uh, of the healthcare practice. This uh, series that we're doing, we have focused on uh, bringing patient healthcare to the patient uh, wherever the patient is, uh, and we'll talk uh, in our next panel. Um, on what the new hospital looks like. And so we've got a nice little theme here, uh, which uh, we're going to try to connect to. And uh, wanna, want, again, want to get from you guys what, you, what trends you're seeing that are, uh, that are opportunities for our partners. Uh, so we'll start uh, our first que question here. Um, I'll bring this one to, uh, to Bonnie and to uh, Jerry. Uh, so in, in our other panel discussion, we have been talking about patient care, uh, remote patient care specifically, and uh, that in and of itself is forcing this, this decoupling of patient records and prescription slips, all the things we used to leave an office with. Um, now, as the healthcare providers are coming to us as patients, um, a lot of those the records and the interactions with the organization are becoming digital assets. So. Um, as we start to move more remote, where are you seeing technology being used to digitize that experience? Uh, I'll stick ladies first, Southern gentlemen here. I'll stick ladies first with Bonnie uh, if you want to address that. I see a couple of opportunities there. Um, one, I know that a lot of our customers are starting to use our label printers on mobile carts. So instead of having a stationary printer, they create a whole cart solution where there's a label printer, maybe a scanner, maybe a PC, and then they just move that cart to wherever the patient is. That way it kind of prevents like errors with pre-printing labels, pre-printing slips, and maybe getting it mixed up. So I think mobile carts is one solution. And I know that they've started using it um, with anesthesia labeling, also with IV bag labeling. Um, and then another possible opportunity that I see is wristbands. So I know people actually use our label printers to print on wristband material. And um, because it can do color, it can highlight any allergens or any particular safety risks the patient has. 
Um, so that's the first step. But I think the second step is to start printing maybe like a barcode or a QR code on the wristband so that um, when a doctor scans that person's wristband, they can access all of the patient records. I don't think anyone has started doing that yet, but it's just really the next step forward from, um, from where they are today. Yeah, it's going to be important, right? If you're not walking, you know, the old school walk into the room and grab the patient's chart and flip through it. Uh, that's not sitting there with the patient anymore. So yeah, I, I love that idea. Uh, Jerry, how about you? Yeah, so in the um, scanning space, you know, we've seen a lot of, as, as you mentioned, at home care, right? So um, from being mobile in a hospital and then being mobile, mobile literally outside of the space, outside of the four walls is a lot different. So um, I think the EMRs and the EHRs out there are doing a really good job of making mobile applications. I won't mention anybody by name, but most of them have some sort of a mobile application, which can be used by end users uh, to access their medical records and things like that. Now, along with that, um, there is some scanning technology that uh, that code has put out um, that helps uh, scan things. So if, you know, insulin pens, things like that, some of those do come with barcodes on them. We can scan them, put them into those electronic medical records. So I think the opportunity here is really realizing what these EHRs and EMRs are doing and then being able to kind of fill in those requirements and help them make it a little easier on the end users. That's two acronyms I had to learn uh, by force. I, I didn't realize I was using electronic medical records uh, and you know, got introduced to the, the acronym and went, oh yeah, that's, that's the app on my phone. Uh, that, that my healthcare provider interacts with. So, uh, yeah, got really critical points. Uh, Alberto and, and Allison, uh, you know, moving kind of forward with that same idea as these uh, these patient records become more digital, um, we have compliancy and, and safety concerns. Obviously, uh, compliancy, especially HIPAA compliance, is usually a, a scary area for somebody that's new to. Uh, selling into the health healthcare space, but um, as those records become more digital, where are you seeing partners start to uh, tackle compliancy and security of those records? Yeah, um, so so I would sort of approach this in a couple ways because we're talking about virtual care, and what I've seen in a trend over the last twelve months of the events that have been going on is is the expansion or exponential increase in virtual health visits and being able to deliver care virtually. The other thing is, is that the definition has changed. It is expanded. So it's no longer just a simple video visit, or it can be, but it's also expanded into the acute care setting from a um, protecting our clinicians and also our patients, allowing them to monitor and being able to talk with families at home from their bedside and also for clinicians to be able to round and do virtual rounding, to be able to monitor medical devices and be able to do that all virtually so that they can scale and, and handle the, the patient surges that we've been having. So I think that's one thing. The other thing that we're seeing a lot of is the increase, and I think this is where the market will move, is into that in-home space from a remote monitoring perspective, also there's a lot of discussion around hospital at home. And some of the, the nice thing that's happened, I would, and I commend the policymakers in the US is they have relaxed regulations that have allowed us to start adopting a lot of these technologies, um, not only from a provider perspective, but also from a patient perspective. So it's made it easier. But to your point around protecting the security aspect of it, anything that we set up workflow-wise um, has to be secure. And any type of, so when you're thinking about any type of initiative you're talking with your customers about, you need to wrap security around it. Because at some point, if you don't do in the very beginning, when you're sitting at the table and we get close to closing a deal, security or compliance is gonna be involved. So we need to always be looking at that from a telehealth perspective. It's that remote access, securing that PHI data. The other thing is we look at from a compliance perspective is that some of our components have been high trust certified um, which is another security type of metric and controls. And so again, we're always looking at how can we secure information? And that's one of going to be one of the key things as you just look at any initiative um, across the health system. Yeah, definitely going to come back to you on that. I want to, I want to hear more about that. Uh, Alberto, where, where are, uh, what's data logic seeing in this uh, compliance and security space? 
we do see that, you know, keeping patient data safe is extremely important. And, uh, you know, like when we use the PDAs to connect to EMR or EHR system, it's very important that there is a very good synergies between hardware and software. A lot of times we do certify our product, our hardware product, to the uh, actual EMR software module to make sure that there is a perfect synergy and works very well and there are no possible flaws of, or uh, possible glitches in the security issue because there is data transfer, especially when the patient is remote. So you have to collect data uh, on site locally, then you have to transfer them. That transfer is a critical point. The software running on the app is a critical point. So I, you know, the, the software backup is also a point, uh, you know, keeping the um, device up to date with the operating system, with the app security and backups is very critical and is an important thing in order to avoid possible problems. Jerry and Alberto, I'll stay with you here with this next question. Um, um, staying in line with your uh, in in your wheelhouse with your uh, your products and your technologies, but uh, I, I've been at Scansor 17 years. Uh, company's been here 27, 28 years, depending on uh, when you listen to this podcast or uh, this panel. Um, but we, you know, we we cut our teeth in the point of sale barcode space, and so scanning has always been uh, near and dear to our heart, right? And so we, we've had long term relationships with partners and suppliers in that space and the technology behind scanning has evolved over that what is uh, in my lifetime a short period of time but in technology is four or five different lifetimes uh, are, are you seeing new either advancements in scanning technology or and or uh, new use cases for it as we start to move uh, or start to experience this transformation of well where healthcare is being provided uh, just to give Alberto a break, Jerry, I'll start with you on this one, but uh, I definitely want to hear both uh, from both of you. Yeah. So um, again, just quickly, I, you know, a long time ago sold outside of the healthcare space uh, scanning technologies, and uh, those seem to have kind of a little bit stagnant, right? Not a ton of advancements, maybe some long range stuff and things like that. Um, when it came to advancing for healthcare, when I really stepped into healthcare, it was obvious that some changes needed to be made. So you know, we're talking what 10 years ago that you know someone came out and said hey you need to have barcodes on everything in a in a hospital uh from everything from the medicine to the patient wristbands and things like that that's a short amount of time but kyle as you said that's a long amount of time in technology so um in our you know in code's newest development we put things like uh, bluetooth low energy which is ble 5.0 which not only secures patient data but also makes it quick and easy to access for the emrs and the ehrs um, as well, we've um, so in the healthcare space, lots of wipe downs of hardware and consistent use, right? So these plastics have to withhold and withstand all of that. Um, we've made it so that it's contactless uh, on the charger, so that no no corrosion or things like that can happen. Um, and it's really it uh, to me, it's a huge advancement. I still plug my phone in to charge it. I don't even put it on one of those bay chargers. But now you got hospitals with thousands of units that are literally charging completely contactless. So huge advancement and a huge help for the hospitals. Okay, well, I'd like to follow up on this, you know, beside the uh, constant upgrades in the reading performance and all the features that the, the devices have in terms of barcode readers, there is a very critical point that came up with the pandemics uh, recently, uh, you know, this really highlighted this. Uh, full disinfection is very important for multiple times a day. This can ruin the outer case of a product. So having a, a the plastics outside, you know, the, that constitute the outer case of the product uh, fully resistant to medical grade disinfectants is very important. So it will not be damaged by the multiple cleaning to avoid cross-contamination. Data Logic did, you know, went a step further, especially for the handheld readers to have antimicrobial plastics as well with silver ions in it. So they avoid possible microbial growth. So thus reducing even more the possibility of cross-contamination between one patient to the next. I hate using my punchlines early because I try to save them for the end, but we, we already, already used it in one of the other panels that um, when we did a serious panel like this, a similar panel like this in uh, the healthcare space, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, similar panel in the retail space, uh, one of our panelists said, you know, we're all in healthcare now. Uh, just because it's a grocery facility or restaurant facility doesn't mean that we're not also wiping down all of the equipment and we have to be cognizant of what chemicals we're using and how often we're cleaning things. So yeah, the, the advancements you two are, are uh, 
identifying that are happening within healthcare specifically are also relevant just about everywhere. Anywhere there's a high touch device these days, um, people are very, very cognizant of, of how many times it's been touched and how often it's been cleaned. Um, okay, so uh, Allison, I said I was coming back to you. Uh, I'd, I'd love to bring uh, the security element back in and uh, Jerry to you too. Um, the, the more data uh, that we digitize, uh, the, uh, the more digital we become as patients and as consumers, uh, the larger the attack vector uh, that for cyber criminals. And, and Allison, you even mentioned hospital at home, and there can't be any more sensitive data than, uh, you know, patient data that hits a SOHO network, so it's something that uh, a, a patient may have at their house. And so um, as we start to talk to our partners about how to address those, um, what do you think, what are the things that they need to be focused on the most um, to help healthcare providers kind of thwart those attacks or deal with them as they come in? Have empathy um, for what they're dealing with. Because when you think about what overall healthcare strategy is, think about everything you just mentioned retail, think about the different care delivery models that are being created. We now have Walgreens that has a footprint, Walmart has healthy hubs, CV CVS is doing some things. So everybody is is creating that access point for healthcare within the United States. So they're going after the same patients as our health systems. So, so even if I have partnerships with you know, a Publix or different grocery stores or other retail entities, that is increasing my threat scape. So, so my market strategy to differentiate myself is also gonna create my potential for security, bad, bad actors or whatever. So when you think about it and you talk to your CIOs, that's one of the things that they're most worried about is when they do innovation or when they do any type of transformation or anything within their organizations, one of the things that they see as an inhibitor to that is worried about security from that perspective. So when you think about security, if I give you an example of a medical device, if I have any breach of any medical device within the organization, that exposes all my data. So a lot of what they've been focused on recently is looking at that, where am I different? How can I approach zero trust um, a zero trust security strategy. We've been focusing a lot on what we're calling clinical zero trust. And that means I'm looking at my medical devices and I wanna be able to monitor all my IOT and medical devices on the network, do profiling, be able to enforce those profiles so I can protect everything that is going on within the organization. And I think it's important to realize, I think healthcare is unique. Maybe it's not, I, I challenge another industry to see what we're doing, but. If you think of any patient room, we have 15 to 20 devices in a room or connection points on average. Think about exponentially across the healthcare system. And we're only going more digital or more sensor driven or anything like that from a data capture perspective. So I think it will continue to grow. We look at integrating our security products so that they work hand in hand together. And so those are different things that you can look at when you're talking with your customers. Ask them what their security challenges have been. Have they had a breach recently? Employees are a big culprit for that from efficient attacks mm -hmm. and things like that. So those are just different things to talk to them about. Yep, biggest flaw in, in any cybersecurity uh, uh, strategy is the is the human beings for sure. Uh, Gold Star, Allison, uh, you created continuity between this panel and the next one on what's inside the hospital. Uh, I love the data point uh, about fifteen to twenty devices in the room. Uh, IoT, obviously, big topic for us. Uh, Jerry, I'm coming to you right now. Talk about BLE, but. Uh, the more, like you said, the more devices we have on the network, the larger the attack vector, the more we have to be concerned about sec uh, security. Uh, I have been using the same example for years and people are tired of hearing me say it, but we all know about the, the target attack years and years and years ago. Well, that wasn't a flaw in necessarily targets uh, POS systems. Uh, the attackers mm -hmm. came through uh, HVAC. They, they had a new HVAC uh, system installed and, and that's how the attackers gained access. So yeah, as partners, anytime you're going in, especially in a healthcare system, uh, adding devices to a network, obviously we have to be super conscientious about what we're doing and uh, what exposure we're having to or, or creating in that network. So Jerry, I'll let you uh, close out this point. I know uh, we wanted to talk about uh, the Bluetooth devices, but. Cybersecurity is a huge thing. And while Allison has to deal with all 20 devices in that room, I am fortunate in the fact that I have to deal with one or maybe two. Uh, when it started, it was very wired, right? Nobody was too concerned about wireless stuff. Then Bluetooth came around 
And now we're actually, we're transferring data that is wireless, right? And so it may, may not be an internet connection. You can still snag that data while it is traveling from place to place. Um, so bringing BLE and 5.0 into the mix, we added an extra security level really. Um, and it changed the game, right? So uh, where before FIPS was a little bit out of reach for us, um, we now have a FIPS model. Um, and all of that is just beefing up security uh, from a Bluetooth standpoint, and then trying to not touch as much data as possible. Get the, get the MR we need and get rid of it. So yep. um, big focus for us. Yep, great. All right, Bonnie, uh, I haven't heard from you in a while. I'm coming to you. Uh, so uh, as we kind of round out our session here, um, I, I look at uh, all the digital transformation that's happening, especially in this space, and I want your opinion. Is this is this a a boon or barrier to our pa to, to patients? Like, are, are are they seeing advantages of um, this digital transformation, or is it becoming a hurdle for them and and uh, creating a barrier in receiving their healthcare? And I know I we sent you questions, and so you've had some language in front of you. And this is a two becomes a two part question intentionally it doesn't flow well verbally. But the other thing that I'm also concerned about is whether or not there are generational or age differences in how patients are adopting uh, this digital transformation. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and, and what Epson's seeing. Um, I think there's probably pros and cons, but for me, I, one huge pro that I see is um, we're able to do, I know that um, we heard that the American Pharmacists Association says that there's out of 3 billion prescriptions a year, there's about 1.5 million mistakes, whether it comes to the right medication or the right dosage, or maybe family members had similar medication at home, they mixed it up. So there's so many different mistakes that can happen. So I think if we can do more with um, digitizing records, digitizing the label, and also improving some, maybe revamping the prescription labels to prevent some of those mistakes. Like some of the things Epson sees that we could be doing with pharmacies is um, putting a picture of the patient on the label. That way when family members have are all taking prescriptions at home, it's a, a huge way to pre prevent some mix-ups. Um, also be able to highlight warnings in color to prevent any type of like accidents mixing up this medication with something else that they're consuming. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity to reduce the amount of errors when it comes to prescription errors. That's a great stat. I, I hadn't heard that one. Uh, I don't know if I stay on camera the whole time you see me looking down jotting notes because <laughs> I, I love to capture some of these uh, these nuggets you guys are throwing out there. But uh, that's a tremendous amount of uh, mistakes in, in a field that you can't afford to mess up a prescription or, or a dosage, et cetera. So, yeah. And then if you think about the text on a prescription labeled instruction, it's so tiny. So I think the more that we can do to kind of um, make it a little bit more simple, more visual, um, less reliance on paper, the better it is for patients' safety. Yeah. And the, and the uh, geographical distance between the healthcare provider and the patient can't be understated. Like e even in-home healthcare providers aren't afforded the same access to patients as they used to be. And so uh, we now are reliant on the patient to, to self-care, to self-medicate, all, all those things, right? So um, yeah, it's a great point. All right. So we're going to go round table here. We'll close out this session. Uh, again, I keep, I, I, uh, um, started off by saying this session, uh, this series, this initiative that we have going on is all about helping our partners discover opportunities out there. Bonnie, I'll, I'll start with you here um, I, I, and we'll go round table, but I would just love to hear um, where you see some uh, tangible opportunities for our partners to get involved in this transformation of healthcare. Uh, for me, I think mobile cards are the main thing I see. Being able to integrate all the pieces of hardware that you need into one card and move it to wherever you need it, um, to the patient, wherever they're at. I think that that's a huge um, improvement with safety, with efficiency. Um, so I, that's where I see the most opportunity myself. Okay, Alberto, how about you? Well, I think that, you know, EMR and slash EHR adoption, and now, in, you know, that's a worldwide trend, but uh, it opens up opportunity for having, you know, PDAs connected to feed information to those systems, software systems. On the other hand, now in the in North America, there is also upgrades going on. You know, these the systems have been adopted since years, so now there is the next level. 
there are you know expansion, upgrading, uh, enhancements of them. So the hardware going on that works along with it, that runs the apps of those EMR system needs to be compliant in terms of security, in terms of speed, in terms of data transfer, in terms of images, you know, transfer back and forth. So that's the next step that I see in terms of improvement and increase and in, in business opportunities. That's great. Uh, Jerry, you're batting third and he just took your EMR answer. So uh, <laughs> you have to be light on your feet here. That's okay. I, I try to do, I try to pivot through this whole thing, right? So um, I think, I think the biggest opportunity right here and right now, I think mean, overall probably focused on sales and things like that, but um, being flexible, listening, and then educating where you can. Uh, I think a lot of healthcare experts, similar as ourselves, or so we've been called on this wonderful call, um, are experts to a certain standpoint. And then they look to us to guide them. They say, hey, you know, as Alberto said, here's my list of requirements from my EMR, my EHR. Help me. So let's learn together. And then if we can be guidance to them. Yep, great. All right, Allison, you're bringing us home. So I would say when you're talking, I agree with Jerry. I mean, listen to your customers, ask what their challenges are. What are they dealing with? A lot of what they're focused on is connectivity, mobility, back to what Bonnie was saying. We were, we've seen a, an uptick in clinical communications and collaboration, which is using a mobile device, but it does med administration. It can do secure texting. It can do different things in integration with the EHR. So there's different ways of doing it. They're transforming their facilities. You know, how are they using technology? Because they need to scale because we have nursing and physician shortages. How can they scale their resources? What can they do? And technology is one of those pieces. You know, can they scan? Are they able to track patients, staff, and assets to improve their operations? You know, what security needs to be wrapped around it? How do we create that digital front door to that patient to create the journey that you're talking about? And, and how do I deal with the different segments of the population? Where is that health um, equity, which is another area that we've become very focused on based on what's been going on over the last 12 months. It's not just rural areas or underserved areas. It's also to me, the senior population too. I now have my mother living with me and she's 80 and her ability to adopt technology or to deal with how do I, how do I actually schedule a vaccine? Everything's digital, everything's on a web page. Now people are starting to open phone lines. So we're gonna to have to have different avenues to also address the aging population, which is gonna be, which is a high segment of our population going forward. So it has to be the right technology and the right delivery and education motion. Th things I took out of that, I heard mobility is key, obviously security is key, obviously uh, lots of other technology references in there, but I think uh, Jerry hit on it first, Allison, you did too, but our role with our mutual customers and their customers is to play consultant. And, and it, honestly, listen, sometimes those are billable services too. So you don't always have to go in there and sell a widget. Um, a, a lot of our part, our customers uh, need help from their partners to play that role of trusted advisor and to play the role of business consultants and come in there and help them decide what is right, uh, where to spend their dollars, um, which, which problems to solve. And again, uh, Jerry made the comment of, uh, uh, he didn't say these exact words, but what I heard was like, hey, I'm staying in my lane. And sometimes I don't see what's outside my lane and our partners are the same way. They find um, businesses that they're very comfortable in. And that's why we do these events is to have uh, uh, organizations like yours uh, collectively to help uh, identify for our partners where those where those other opportunities are. So uh, I thank uh, the four of you, Allison, Bonnie, Jerry, Alberto, I thank uh, all four of you for joining us today uh, for this session. Uh, partners, again, this is one of three uh, in a series of panel discussions we're having on healthcare. So I hope that you visit uh, www.scansource.com slash healthcare program to take advantage of this and our other assets out there. And with that, I will sign us off. Thank you very much.